This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 150 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show. Tell me about that horse. Please support our sponsors as they make our show possible. And our, our, one of our sponsors today is Equestrian Collections. You can visit them at equestriancollections.com. Plus Uncle Jimmy's. And you can find them at uncle-jimmy's.com. This is Glenn the Geek. And this is Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Well, howdy, Helena. Hi, Glenn. I am giddy with excitement today. I know. And, you know, I am too. Now, I didn't get to see the book because they sent you the book and didn't send me a book. I know. I know. I Finally, I get something. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know what? Books are the best thing to get because... It's just not any book either. We're going to talk about that in a minute. We have... I, I really think that the audience is going to love this guy. Yeah. He's a special one. He's, he's, uh, he's a great guy. Makes great stuff. We like him. We love him. And he's not just an author and a horseman and a photographer. He's a hell of an artist. Oh, my gosh. You know me. Princess and the P. Picky Helena. Yep. I really like this man's work. Really, really do. He, I know, uh, and I'm anxious to hear what, how many flakes out of, uh, out of a bale you give this book because um, <clears throat> it's, it's, I can't wait to get it myself, and I can't wait to give it as gifts. Yeah, it's, um, it is. It, it'll, whoever you give this book to as a gift, it will indeed be a special person because you know what's going to happen is you're going to go into the store or you're going to get it, and you're going to leaf through it, and you're going to go, I want to keep it. <laughs> so whomever it is that you're thinking of giving the book to is going to be really special because you're not going to want to part with it yourself once you see it. Well, let me uh, – let, let, we'll talk about that in a minute here. First, I wanted to, to say I just got a call yesterday, and we get to pick up our new Greyhound on Saturday. <gasps> Hooray! We haven't talked about it on Stable Scoop. We talked about it on Horses in the Morning, Attack and Habit, but uh, we put in our application last week. Our Greyhound died last year on Valentine's Day in 2010, and we had had her for 13 years. So, you know, we needed a little time before we got another one, and we knew that we always wanted another Greyhound. By the way, uh, this is going to sound like a Greyhound commercial, and it is. They (laughs) are terrific pets. Uh, They truly are terrific house pets. Helena knows she. You got the. You babysit Bam Bam a couple times. I loved Bam Bam. And loved her. I got to tell you, Helena, this one we just met, and what we did is we went to Shamrock Greyhounds, which is the local one here in Louisville, the adoption center. They get the that's cute Shamrock Shamrock Greyhounds, and they're they're uh, they get retired Greyhounds off the track. And, you know, greyhounds are really the thoroughbreds of the dog world. They're racers. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. They have that racing mentality. They're just like getting a thoroughbred. They're, they're kind of quirky, but, you know, 99% of the time they lay around and sleep. They love to sleep. That other 1% of the time they like to run around like a nut. Um, <laughs> and the other percent of the time they just Kind of like you? <laughs> yes, exactly. They fit my personality perfectly. You know how they As say they dogs do. match their owners? It yes. just matches. Now, I wish I was as skinny as they were, but, mm. but uh, we have the same personality, and they are lovers. And we, we, so we picked one out. I've been watching for six months. Jennifer just was not ready to get another one yet. I've been watching for six months on this website this one particular hound by the name of Glory, a little mm. girl because we like little greyhounds. They come pretty big. You can get up to almost a 100-pound greyhound, mm-hmm. and the little ones run 40 to 50 pounds, and they really are smaller. And I've been watching this little girl, about 50 pounds, and she's been on there for six months, and I kept thinking, I wonder what's wrong with this. So what I did is I finally been nudging Jennifer enough, and she caught me, kept caught catching me looking at the website. <laughs> <laughs> Most women catch their, their husbands looking at porn. Yeah, I know. You're looking, oh, at looking at greyhound, greyhound pictures. <laughs> so <clears throat> she, although it might have been, it might as well have been porn, because she kept saying, no, no, no. <laughs> So, you know, I probably would have been better off looking at porn there for a while. So then she started warming up to the idea a little bit. And um, and I said, well, you know, I'm going to find – there's a meet and greet here in Lexington by this group. Let's go down and ask about Glory and see why she's been there for six months. That is a long time. And the people didn't know anything about her. So I was <laughs> like, oh, man. And they said, well, get on the website. They have a Facebook page. And I didn't even think about that. 
course, duh. So I get on their website and I that weekend, that's Saturday, and I, I sign up for their uh, Facebook page, and I'll be darned if Monday morning they didn't put a whole post and a picture about Glory. Aww. And and all about her, and, you know, she's at a foster home, and, you know, and she, all this stuff, and they posted a picture of her, you saw it, in sunglasses. She was wearing these big white sunglasses. And I said to Jennifer, I said, this is an omen. We just asked about her over the weekend, and now they post a picture and a story about her on Facebook that, that Monday, the day after I started following them. Yeah, and she said okay. So I sent in the application, and we had our. They actually come out and check out your house, and, and interview you, and check out your other pets, make sure everybody's healthy, and call references and all. Oh God, I know. So, make you jump through. Which I hoops. think is a good idea. Give blood. Know? It is. It is. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. So then we got to meet Glory two nights ago. She came over the foster mommy, who is absolutely adorable, sweet. Uh, Southern girl from right around here, who is a master's student at UK. Um, she's going for dairy farm uh, management, and she is a sweetheart and has a couple horses. Turns out she's a horse girl. What a nice thing to do on the side I to, know. to foster greyhounds. I know, and she, you know, she can't be making a lot of money, and you know, she already has her own greyhound, and she fostered this one. Well, she really likes this dog, and she took right to us. She came right over to me, and then as we were sitting there talking, I was sitting on the floor. She was laying practically on my lap. And Aww. she is just like Bam Bam. She has that same personality and the brindle and, you know, but smaller. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what a sweetheart. And, you know, tough, rough Jennifer not fall in love with anything. Yeah. Uh, she, you know, I said toward the end of the night, I said, okay, you, I know you had lots of reservations. She said, oh, she's a sweetie. So <laughs> Jennifer's a mush underneath it all. <laughs> she has this she, tough she, exterior, though. Yo, she tries real hard. But, you know, she's getting really soft in her old age. <laughs> and I and if you tell her you I said that, you're dead. <laughs> And I didn't know it, but apparently she sent you a picture even before the dog left that night. Oh, yeah. I was so. like, what is this? And, you know, she didn't. It's like she did it on the slide because usually when she sends me um, a picture message, she puts a little note at the bottom explaining what it is. You know, there was no message. It was just a picture of you <laughs> with a grin from ear to ear and glory. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, felt <laughs> I know what this, this is. Girl. So we get her on Saturday. So oh. that's the good news. Saturday, we're going to go pick her up. And the girl, the, the foster girl, likes her so much. Her name is Randy. She likes her so much. She's going to go and buy a dog cake. They sell dog cakes. At, we have something here called the Bluegrass Barkery, which is a, <laughs> a, 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 a pet store and a bakery for dogs. Bluegrass Barkery. And they make full-size cakes for dogs for parties. And what she's going to do is she's going to buy a cake, and all the Greyhound owners in town are getting together at the dog park right across the street from my house. It's a 12-acre dog park. And she's going to have a party with the cake, and that's Nuh-uh. how she's going to say goodbye to Glory. Yep. Cause, Nuh-uh. Cause, yeah, she's going to have a party. Oh, my God. My heart is just going to explode <laughs> with the love. I can't take it. Oh, I can't take it. I know. She was so... I think she's going to cry. She was... She's going to be pretty upset. She's had her for six months, you know? But she How also realizes she? she can't keep... She's 23. No, no, no. No. Oh. Sorry. Glory. Oh, three years old. Oh, okay. Yep. Sorry. She's three. I don't think she ever raced. They've actually found her as a stray, which is very unusual for greyhounds. Uh-huh. Um, and she doesn't have the tattoos of a dog that raced, so they think that she might have gotten away from a breeder or something like that. Um, but she has the personality of a, of a racer, though, and, and they said she can fly. So I can't wait to see her run. It's oh, going to be fun. I, I love her name, too, Glory. Did you yeah. name her Glory, or was no, she, that she was her name? she apparently came with Glory, and, uh, the, and Randy said I was going to change her name, but she already answered to Glory, and... So I guess we won't be changing it either because okay. uh, because she answers to it. She does answer to it. She came right over to me. Mm. Um, and she goes, she's just like Bam Bam. She goes from person to person to be petted all night long. Just stands <gasps> there to be that. petted. You know how Bam Bam was. Great big mush pot. Yeah, she definitely is. So we, uh, we're very excited to get a, get a greyhound again. Oh, I'm excited for you. I'm sure I'll be getting lots more pictures soon. Yes, you will. Uh, they'll be posting pictures all over Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break and talk about uh, let's talk about Uncle Jimmy's, and then we're going to get to our guest. Tell everybody who our guest is. Our guest today is a lovely man named Vaughn Wilson, who is first and foremost a horseman. Um, I guess, well, in my opinion, and in a very close second, he is an artist, and he's an artist artist. He uh, is a photographer and a painter, um, and 
and he's been around horses all his life. He uh, he and his wife have Hawcrest Farm, and uh, they're currently breeding Appaloosas, who uh, some very significant Appaloosas who've uh, been some champion reigning uh, reigning horses. Um, and he compiled this book of some of his favorite horse people. And in the book are photographs, very special photographs of each person who's highlighted and a complimentary painting. And, you know, I never asked him what medium he uses that looks like it's oil, you know, oil on canvas. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know either. <laughs> it was stupid me. But, um, but his paintings so deeply capture the, his subjects and as and horse they, people and animal lovers, you know how some people when they do paintings and they look like they look like pictures when they're done. They, you can't tell whether it's a photo or a painting. Right, his look like paintings, like brushstroke paintings, and I like that. <laughs> We're gonna have on with us in just a few minutes, Vaughn Wilson, and he is uh, he compiled, illustrated, and photographed. Tell me about that horse. Stories from exceptional people about treasured horses. And speaking of hip, there is nobody more hip than Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy is about as hip as it gets. You know, he was an airline pilot for so many years. He's a horse person. He's a horseman first, I think. And then he decided to fly people around and make some money. And he retired from that. And, uh, he st- you know, he, his horse needed some treats. He figured out the best way to make treats and, the you know, in a quality way. And he invented Uncle Jimmy's Hanging Balls. And then from there came his entire line of products. Uncle Jimmy's has to be one of the most popular treats in any tax shop or feed store across America. You've seen them. If you have not tried them, you should. Next time you walk into your feed store, you grab a Uncle Jimmy's hanging ball, you hang it in your horse's stall, and you're going to see how much they love these treats. Uncle Jimmy's is quality. That's one of the biggest things. It's quality. And they use the finest ingredients and they're fun. That's the other thing. Your horse will find it to be fun. And that's why Uncle Jimmy's works. So check out Uncle Jimmy's brand treat products. You can find them at their website at uncle-jimmy's.com. Helena and I both use Uncle Jimmy's products uh, for, our, for our animals. And he makes, uh, now he makes uh, treats for chickens, too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you have chickens like Jamie does, she, she has some pecker wreckers out there. That's Uncle Jimmy's version of a treat for a chicken. It's called a pecker wrecker. We're going to be getting some chickens. I'm going to get me a pecker wrecker. Are you allowed to have chickens? Yeah. Yeah? Peter wants to get fainting goats now. Chickens, fainting goats, and ducks. <laughs> That's for another episode of Stable Scoop, though. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> All right. That's uncle-jimmies.com. Fawn, I am so happy to have you on today because I had no idea who you were last week. And then your beautiful book arrived at my doorstep. And now you're probably one of my favorite horsemen of all time. <laughs> oh, gosh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> she says because, th- that to all the good looking guys. I'm sure no, <laughs> if you if you listen to any past Stable Scoop show, you'll know that I am the pickiest person in the whole world, especially when it comes to to horses and horse people and animal people and art. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are very few people who actually capture the essence of a true animal lover. And your book is all about the true animal lover. You have... That's uh, that's what I was trying to portray. I wanted people to have a sense of, uh, you know, a special horse in people's lives because I had had so many in my life... uh, uh, I've been a breeder and a uh, uh, horse lover all my life, but uh, I can look back and see one or two very special horses, and I want to know if other people could do that as well, and that's where the book came from. Well, it's that's actually, it brings up a good point, is you have clearly been exposed to a lot of wonderful people and a lot of wonderful animals. In this book, Tell Me About That Horse, you have um, some very special people who You've got some brief interviews in here, a little bit about them, some of their favorite horses. There, a photograph of this person is featured as well as a painting. How did you decide who you wanted to interview for this book? Well, when I first started thinking about the book, I sat down and made a wish list. And I told my wife, I said, you know, if I could get enough of these people to tell me about a special horse in their life. And there again, I didn't want to necessarily hear about their most famous horse or their most valuable horse. I wanted to hear about the one that tugged at the heartstrings a little bit, the one that, you know, maybe brought up some emotion when they thought about them. 
And I said, you know, if I can get enough of these people on this wish list to tell me about that special horse, I think it'd make a great book. And she said, yeah. She said, I think it would too, but you're never going to do it. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, you don't like to leave home, and those people are not going to come sit on our porch and tell you about their horses. (laughs) So (laughs) I took that as a challenge, and uh, three years and about 40,000 miles later, I had a book. (gasps) So you did go out and find these people? Oh, yes. Absolutely. I had to go see each one because I had to do the photography and the interview. But you know what? You couldn't figure out the essence of a person until you visit there. If you're talking about their horses and their farm and their place and their space, Mm -hmm. in order to do that and even capture it, I would assume, in the paintings, you really got to see where they live. You really do. You have to sit down with them and get to know them one-on-one. And the one question that comes up a lot is people always ask me, what is Charlie Daniels like? And I said, well... You that know, was going to be sit- my next question, so go ahead. <laughs> well, when you're sitting with, with Charlie Daniels at the kitchen table, you don't think of him as Charlie Daniels. It's just two guys talking about their horses, and horse people love to talk about their horses. No. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of what the experience was. You know, I would go and sit down with, uh, with people like him and Trevor Brazil or Michael Martin Murphy. Um, in fact, Murph and I sat on the back of my pickup truck up in Winterset, Iowa, one day and just talked about horses and music and stuff. So interesting stuff. We had friends recently, and I can't say who or why, but uh, that actually were in Vegas and got to uh, meet Wayne Newton and take a tour of his barns because he's a big Arab guy. Oh, yeah. And they said, you know, they said he was just sort of ho-hum when they first met him, but when he got to the barn, he opened up and lit up, and they spent hours with him. Yeah, everything changes when you start talking about horses with horse people. I mean, uh, you know, of course, I've always known that because I have been around horses all my life. And and uh, so I, that's one thing I wanted to know. You know, do these other people, these celebrities, these people that we look up to, you know, how do they feel about that? You know, what are they like when they're talking about their horses? And they're just like anybody else. They're just horse people. They are. Horses are the great equalizer. We're all on the same. We're all in the same corral when it comes to horses. There you go. Now you have it's and it's funny that you're you know that we're talking about what is the essence of these people as you go and you visit them and you're featuring them in this book. One of the things that I found particularly lovely about this project of yours is the that you captured their essence not only in the photograph but in the painting. It's it's not a real it's not like those paintings that look like a photograph, you know, they're so accurate you, you can't tell it's a painting. Mm-hmm. But it there's like a peacefulness about your subjects. They're either, you, you either have captured, like with Templeton and Jane, that painting of her is so beautiful. It totally captures her love for that horse. And then uh, Gino D'Ambrose totally captures his, his essence. Uh-huh. You know, were you aware of this as you were painting and taking pictures? Well, you have to understand, Helena, I have been a portrait photographer for almost 40 years. I mean, this is what I do. And um, I have, you know, when I started the paintings, uh, I I look for the same things in that. I I want to capture that person as nearly as possible to their personality. So that's just what it's all about for me. And it's, and it's not just their personality. I mean, to our listeners, it's not just the personality that's, that's captured in these paintings. There is a, it's an essence. It's like you can just feel that they are animal lovers, that these are happy people because they are fully immersed in that thing that feeds their soul, you know. Um, and I think a lot of people, a lot of artists miss that. They, they, they capture the majestic beauty of the horse or they capture, um, you know, maybe the, the likeness of the person. But there are so few people who actually capture what it means to be a true horse lover well, I think it's interesting that you brought up that about uh, capturing the soul because uh, we were recently honored by the American Horse Publications as uh, uh, a finalist for uh, Book of the Year. And one of the things they said in uh, talking about the book is that uh, in the paintings, the eyes of the subjects were riveting. So they draw you in. And, you know, the old saying is the eyes are the windows to the soul. So. I think it's interesting that you mentioned that. Absolutely. Now, who who out of your cast of characters in here was uh, particularly eye-opening? 
eye opening. Um, you know, one of my favorite stories, and it's not because uh, he is necessarily one of the most famous people in there, because I, I don't think a lot of people will know Sam Powell, but um, Sam is a great trainer, clinician. He's been around for a long time. And uh, his story about how he, at the age of 17, thought he was really something because he had won a couple of belt buckles in a, a local rodeo. And then he went out and went to work for an old man uh, on, a, on a farm out close to his place, and uh, he learned a very valuable life lesson from that old man. Uh, here, you know, Sam was strutting around like he was really something, and uh, the, the things he learned from that man were incredible. It's funny because, right, as you said, Sam Powell, I was just flipping through the book. That's exactly the page that <laughs> that I landed on. Yeah. And, uh, who and was, the, who was the one ahead. that surprised you the most? Uh, the one that surprised me the most. Oh, gosh. That's, uh, that's tough. Uh, one, of, one of my all-time favorite stories, I guess, and, and uh, was uh, Pam... Uh, Pam Grace, Pam Fowler Grace, uh, and her story about uh, her horse, Pay and Go. Uh, she had this Appaloosa, Leopard Appaloosa uh, dressage horse. She is a dressage trainer. And um, the story about her being called uh, to uh, let Paul McCartney fly her and the horse to New York City to take part in uh, Linda McCartney's memorial service. You know, that was... Uh, I, I wouldn't say a surprising story because I actually already knew the story, but to hear her tell it was incredible. I've got it on tape, <laughs> and if you could ever hear the tape, you would understand. It's, it's extremely emotional, and it just tells you, you know, how she feels about that horse and what she was able to do with that horse. Mm, hmm. That's I, I'm already starting to feel. You know, you feel an affection toward these people uh, in your book. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, and we only have a fraction of the story. Like you sat down with them, you spent time with them, and you basically summarized what you experienced into the, the couple of pages for each person in this book. But um, what a great way to spend three years. I mean, do you look back on that, that time and say, wow, I feel really great about this? Can I tell you a short story about that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, people ask me, was it worth it? You know, I spent a lot of time, and of course I had a business to run. I am, like I say, I am a portrait photographer and painter, and uh, so I would have to come back and make a living for a while and then go back on the road. Um, and some people say, well, you know, was it worth it? Was it worth all that time and all that effort? And of course I met some wonderful people. I met uh, people I never thought I'd have a chance to sit down with and become friends with. Uh, it was just an incredible journey. But uh, one day here at the studio, just a couple of months ago, a big old cowboy came walking in the door. And uh, I mean, it's a big guy, big guy. And uh, he walked in and he said, I need to talk to you. And I said, uh-oh. <laughs> Round for a back door if I need one. And uh, he said, I just wanted to tell you, he said, I don't read books. I don't read books. He said, anybody who knows me, knows that the worst thing you can buy me as a gift is a book because I don't read books. He said, a couple of weeks ago, my wife walked in and she had your book and she handed it to me. And I said, what's this? She said, I thought you might enjoy just looking through it. He said, well, I laid it on a table and it laid there for about two weeks. And uh, he said, last night I was walking through that room and I saw the book laying there and I decided to pick it up and just thumb through it and see what it was about. He said, and you're the reason I didn't get much sleep last night. <laughs> he said, because I could not put that book down. I couldn't go to bed until I read every word of it. And so, yeah, when you asked me, was it worth it? Yeah, that tells you it was worth it. <laughs> do you think you'll do something like this again in the future? Oh, yeah. Already started. <laughs> Is it going to be okay. a similar thing, new people? Uh, yeah, probably. Um, I recently uh, had the honor of... Uh, interviewing uh, Howard Council out in uh, uh, Lawton, Oklahoma. He's uh, considered the best maker of uh, roping saddles in the country. I mean, he's made four for George Strait, four or five, I forget. And uh, most all the big ropers, uh, Roy Cooper, Trevor Brazil, uh, Joe Beaver, all those guys ride his saddles. And so, yeah, I've started the uh, 
interview process for the next volume. Well, tell tell me a little bit. Well, well, we're going to have to take a commercial break here. But when we come back, I want you to talk a little bit about Dusty Rogers, okay. um, because you know a lot of people won't re- won't know who that is, but mm-hmm. yet you know that had to be kind of fascinating too, because of who who that person is. So that was let, very special. Yeah. I bet. So let's let's uh, if you're in the, if you're a cowboy at all, that one had to be special. So let's <laughs> let's uh, come back right after the commercial and talk about Dusty Rogers. Okay. One of the reasons I am so proud to have Equestrian Collections as a sponsor on the Horse Radio Network is they are one of the most innovative companies in the equine retail world. Their website is so easy to get around and offers so much for the shopper. One of those things it offers is numerous online catalogs. Flip through the pages just like a real catalog. Find something you like, click on it, and buy it immediately. And flip away, find stuff you like, and buy it right there off the catalog. It's so cool. That's something you can't do when you're sitting on your couch with a catalog. So you can check out all the different catalogs available at equestriancollections.com. And, you know, we always say it, but it's true. Equestrian Collections does provide the universe of equestrian shopping at your fingertips at a price you can afford. You're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show. We're here with uh, Vaughn Wilson as our guest, and his book is Tell Me About That Horse. It's stories from exceptional people about treasured horses, and one of those exceptional people I want you to tell us about is Dusty Rogers. First of all, for those that don't know, tell us who Dusty is. Dusty Rogers, uh, his, that's a nickname. His real name is Roy Rogers, Jr., that's the name that everybody might know. <laughs> That's the one, and uh, you have to understand, I'm of the age that uh, I was a huge, huge Roy Rogers fan growing up. I still am. I still watch his movies. And uh, to get the opportunity to sit down with, uh, with Roy Rogers Jr. and talk about Trigger, I mean, that's a dream come true for an old uh, cowboy wannabe like me. And uh, I, I spent some really quality time with Dusty and, and heard great stories about his dad and about the horse. And, and his mom, too, everything. for that matter. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it was just a, a wonderful experience for me. And, and to get to be friends with him and be able to call him a friend, that's very special. Now, does he, he still rides, I assume? Does Dusty uh, ride at all? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he does. He, uh, he doesn't do a lot of it because he, he travels so much. He's, uh, you know, he, he's an entertainer. And uh, an incredible entertainer. He uh, has his own band and uh, sings a lot of his dad's old songs. And, and back when I interviewed him, it was in Branson at the uh, Roy Rogers Museum. Of course, they've closed that down since then. But They, had they the sold Trigger, there. for God's sake. They sold Trigger. They I did. know. Yeah. <laughs> they sold Trigger. They sold uh, Trigger Jr. They sold, but I uh, think HRTV, what? or not HRTV, RFD bought RFD. Trigger, didn't they? They did. Yeah, they did. that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. So you know There's somebody some... was going to buy him that was going to take care of him anyway. Yeah, well, I think they take him on tour, you know, so other people can see him. How about, there's one guy, too, that uh, somebody, people may not have heard of unless they're really into, they have to be really into cowboy music and country music, but I've heard some of his music, and we're hoping to get him on the show here uh, one day soon, and that's Michael Martin Murphy. Yeah, well, he's on the cover of the book, as you well know. And yep. Uh, that was an interesting story because uh, I had been a fan of his for years, and my wife uh, always loved him. She That was one of her favorite singers when she was in college and back when he was doing pop songs. And a uh, funny story about him uh, when we were talking about Roy Rogers, uh, when, when Michael decided to go strictly co- uh, cowboy music, he called Roy Rogers and went out for a visit in California. And uh, he said, Roy, do you have any advice for me? And uh, he said, Roy, thought a minute, and he said, uh, Michael, I do. I've got two pieces of, inter- of advice for you. He said, number one, never say or do anything that's going to lead a child or a kid down the wrong road. Number two, get yourself a good-looking horse because you're going to get old and ugly. <laughs> <laughs> that is the quote of the day. <laughs> yeah, so uh, anyway, uh, Murph, oh he likes to be called, he... he um, he invited me up to uh, Winterset, Iowa, a couple of years back, and uh, he was uh, performing at the John Wayne uh, Centennial Memorial so- Service or something like that. It was a big three-day festival that they were having. And uh, so I went up and spent three days up there with him. And um, that, In fact, that's where I met Sam Powell for the first time. 
and and it was just a great experience and uh, you know getting to hang around with him and um when we got ready to uh, do the cover for the book i had this image of him with uh, him and his horse looking at each other and i said you know that says everything that i want to say in this book it's the bond between that man and that horse mm-hmm. and so that's why that we use that for the cover well, you know, very now you're very artistic, so did you get up on stage there and sing along, or? I did not. Uh, <laughs> I would have if he, if he had asked me, I guess, because I never turned down an audience. I love to get on stage. <laughs> I've been doing that a long time. Do you have a favorite photograph from the, from the book? One that really just, you, you keep coming back to and saying, yep. That's definitely my favorite. Um, That's like asking if you have a favorite kid. Well, because yeah, I have one, and I, I, because I have one, and I just want to talk about my favorite one. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mine, was being diplomatic to ask him if he had one. <laughs> mine would probably be different from yours because of uh, because of who it was, and and it's not the photograph, but the painting that I did of Orrin Mixer. Uh, I've been a, a huge fan of Orrin Mixers for thirty or thirty five years. He is. Uh, probably the all-time greatest equine painter of all time. He painted uh, the official horse for seven different breed registries. And, um, you know, just the chance to get to sit down and and get to know that man a little bit. And uh, um, he was 87 at the time, uh, and little did we know that uh, he would die about three years, I'm I'm sorry, three months later. Mm. But uh, after I did the painting, I sent his wife, Uh, a G. Clay print of the painting. And she called me and she said, "Um, I just want to thank you, of course, for the portrait. But she said, I wanted to thank you for including Owen's hands in the portrait. And I said, well, you know, that was his talent. That talent came through his hands. I said, you know, that would have to be part of any portrait of Owen Mixer. She said, absolutely. But she said, most people don't do that. Most people don't realize that. And she said, I just want to thank you for doing it. So that, to me, is kind of special. And, um, you know, I know it's not the photograph, but it's, uh, it's still special. No, it's the page. Well, that's what I'm having a hard time with. Is some, in some of the, the pages, the photographs really um, speak to me, and in some, the, the paintings do. And when I had said earlier that your, your artwork had created the essence of someone's happiness, like if there's not an animal in the picture, there's, it's the essence of that contentment and that happiness and uh Oren Mixer definitely has his painting has that essence of someone who has spent their life doing something that they really love to do right right so um, I happen to, <laughs> I happen to really like the picture of Bob Tallman kissing his humongo cat <laughs> <laughs> you know I haven't I haven't heard uh, what Bob thinks about that photograph I have talked to him since then and he didn't bring it up so I didn't, I didn't get- <laughs> <laughs> what made you? I mean, this is a book about horses, but this is so a picture of a man who loves a cat and a cat who is so worthy of that kind of love. What made you pick this picture? Well, we were just we were just playing around. You know, we were going down to look at some of his bucking bulls. And for those of, of your listeners who are not familiar with Bob Tallman, he's he's one of the greatest rodeo announcers of all time. The guy just has a phenomenal voice. And uh, but if he, you've ever heard uh, a if you've ever heard bits and pieces of rodeo announcing in in a video or in something like that, you've heard Bob Tolman. He Bob is the classic. He makes every guy like me in the radio industry jealous and yeah. just basically <laughs> mad at him. Um, <laughs> yeah. just, <laughs> well, he has got a voice, and uh, and he said he told me he said it's God given. He said I thank God every day for it because it has made my my career but uh he's just such a nice guy and and uh, a, a real gentleman uh but like i say he he also uh, raises bucking bulls and so he was taking me down to see the bucking bulls and we walked out through the backyard and that cat came up and he grabbed the cat and jerked him up there and kissed him and i shot a picture <laughs> and so <laughs> i just thought it was funny so i included it in the book uh, and he's still hey. mad at you about that probably Oh, I think it's perfect. It just won him a fan, so he can't be too mad at him. And you know what? Now, he would be, Bob would be somebody, uh, I'd love to talk to him about what it's like to breed uh, bucking bulls. That's yeah, a story yeah. right there. I bet that's You have to do that one without me, because I'll just be jealous the whole time he's on the phone. <laughs> well, that would be interesting, because he has some great bulls, and uh, 
we we actually rode down to the bull pasture in a, a I think it was a one of those mules or a gator or something like that. And uh, I said, I'm going to get out and make some pictures of the bulls. He said, okay. He said, I'm going to stay on this thing. He said, don't let them square up to you. <laughs> and so I was watching very carefully, and I would, uh, when one would start to square up, I would move off to the side. Yeah, I now, bet. <laughs> that confused him. <laughs> and so, so we, we had a great time together then. Now, uh, one last thing. Uh, we I know, Glenn, and I could sit here and talk to you all day. Um, tell us a little bit about Hawk Crest Farm, and that's your special place on earth, isn't it? It is. Uh, we have been breeding Appaloosa reining horses for, oh gosh, a number of years. And, uh, you know, before that we were breeding Appaloosas, but we were just breeding for color, you know, just breeding for good horses. But when we, when we got into the uh, the reining segment of it, that's what really turned us on. And, and so we started trying to buy some, the best uh, mares that we could buy. We we bought mares with uh, world and national championships, and um, that was our breeding program. And so we started breeding, you know, for uh, uh, for other people, and and we would breed. We would pick the correct stallion to go with this particular mare, and uh, you know, breed accordingly, and then hopefully sell the baby to somebody that was going to take it, and uh, you know, go all the way with it. Huh. So that's that's what we've been doing for. A number of years and uh, it's been very successful for us uh, we've cut back um, I've sold a lot of my mares uh, at one time it was considered uh, by other people not by me but uh, uh, that we had the best group of Appaloosa reigning mares in the world and um, I thought that was pretty impressive but uh, like I said we've started selling mares it, uh, it it got so time consuming and it ties you down so much especially when I'm trying to do these sorts of things and I'm traveling with the book and and all that and it leaves a big burden on my on my wife who has to stay here and take care of all of that so where where, just, where is the farm where is it that Petal, Mississippi okay yeah I didn't, um, I didn't hear any southern accent so I was confused <laughs> Um, oh, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've been in Pedal all my life, and uh, it's a great little place to live. It's right outside Hattiesburg. Uh, you all might be familiar with Hattiesburg uh, because Brett Favre uh, lives in Hattiesburg. Yep. And, yep. Uh, oh, yeah. So Football, just, huh? <laughs> yeah, just across the river from them, and, and uh, uh, I've been here forever. You're down there in hurricane country. Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> let's knock on some wood yeah, that we don't see any don't down see there. Any this year. Oh, oh, <laughs> Katrina was devastating here. Uh, y'all probably didn't hear about us, but uh, no, I th- actually do think that's one of the reasons I knew of Hattiesburg. Was yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was terrible. Uh, I've, I've lived here all my life, and I've been through a lot of hurricanes, but never anything like that. I mean, even Camille back in '69 was nothing compared to Katrina. Huh. Mm. It was just, uh, just devastating. It, it tore this place up. Well, where can people find your book? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it is available on Amazon.com, and it's also available at uh, TellMeAboutThatHorse.com. And, uh, of course, if you get it through TellMeAboutThatHorse.com, you can get uh, a personal autograph. I see that. I mm. And, and I have a lovely autographed copy. I am so protective of this book already. <laughs> My daughter's like, oh, Mom, can I, can I? No. This book? I said, put the Sharpie down first. <laughs> I know, so you can find this on your website at uh, tellmeaboutthathorse.com. Uh, about mm-hmm. uh, the price is forty four ninety five because this is a, this is really a coffee table book. It is a coffee table book, but it's it's a coffee table book that you're going to want to read because right. of the stories. I mean, that's, it really is a nice. It's worth every penny. This well, is a great gift, by the way. If you've got a birthday coming up, um, you got an anniversary coming. Guys out there that listen to our show, and I know there's a few of you. If you have an anniversary coming up, and your your lady's a horse girl, this is this is a. Would you say this is a horse girl approved for an anniversary gift, there, Helena? This is horse girl approved. This is horse husband approved. This is uh, art enthusiast approved. Yeah, this hits all those bases. Good. All right. So if this you- would get if this five flakes. Wow! Wow! See, we 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 do a we rate by flakes, and there's five flakes in a bale. So uh-huh. 
I think you're the first one ever to get five flakes. To be honest, I've never wow. given a five flakes. Yep. <laughs> wow! Thank you very much. That's that's incredible. You know, I think it's like you say, it's great for people who love horses, but I think it's also good for people who just like a good story because there are some stories in here that that uh, were just incredible for me to hear and, and to be able to sit with these people and, and listen to them. And I got to tell you, I saw more than a few tears with people talking about that special horse. It's uh, uh, it, it's something that just brings up a lot of emotion. And, uh, uh, you know, the forward was written by Nolan Ryan, the baseball legend, and Nolan said in there, he said, the stories are going to make you laugh, they're going to make you cry, but they will entertain you. Well, that's great. Uh, this is terrific. You know, we did a, a couple of weeks ago, we had the opportunity to be the first ones ever to record a live show from Elvis's barn at Graceland. I heard about that, yeah. And yeah. I'll tell you what, what a special moment. So you had you had 30 of those special moments, you know? Um, and you actually got to talk to the people in person. You know, we didn't get to talk to Elvis. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but it was, you know, one of those special moments. And, and uh, how cool for you to be able to do this, too. You probably got more out of it than anybody. Well, I did. Uh, you know, like I say, there were just people that I never thought I'd get a chance to meet, like Larry Mahan, uh, you know, what a legend. Uh, Trevor Brazil, the only man that's ever won eight all-round championships. Ro- you know, Roy Cooper, all these great radio, uh, rodeo performers. And uh, just to be able to sit down with them and and, uh, and actually become friends with them, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, some of these people I would spend, uh, you know, 10 or 12 hours with in one day just because we were having so much fun. And they, in turn, would tell me how to get in touch with their friends that they thought uh, might be interested in doing it. they said, hey, this is fun. I think so-and-so would like to do this. You know, so that's, um, it, it was just a very incredible journey. Well, we're looking forward to uh, finding out about your next journey and, uh, and the results of that that project, I hope you keep doing what you do because you're definitely making folks like Glenn and I out there very happy. Uh, So, so thank you. And that's Vaughn Wilson in the book is tell me about that horse. And we of course will put more information at stablescoop.com about where you can purchase this book. Vaughn, thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, to spend it with Glenn and I and the stable scoop listeners. We appreciate it. Helene, I really appreciate you and Glenn and the opportunity to talk to your listeners. Okay, so we have another new favorite guest. Every week we have a new favorite <laughs> guest, Every week we have Vaughn Wilson. He's and he does have though. that nice, like nice voice you should be jealous about. I do, I am. I'm yeah. jealous with anybody with a nice voice. Mine stinks. I'm a radio yeah, guy. You have, have a, a nice voice. voice. You have a nice voice. Well, you know how nobody okay. likes their own voice? Yeah, I do. I hate mine. I know, I and you mine. have a great radio voice. I've told you that since day one. And you don't well, believe me. My dad said I had a face for radio, but <laughs> you about and Jamie my... have great radio voices. When you two do shows together, it's terrific. It's like two radio people talking. All right, so we'll do it together next week. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Vaughn Wilson, again, a big thanks to you for coming on and joining us. And uh, I really, you know, I, I gush about everything we have on here, everything we feature, because you know what? I pick, well, not just me, but Glenn and I pick. Things that we think you guys will really like, that you'll appreciate, that you'll love as much as we do. And uh, this is definitely a, a, what are they, a labor of love. Yeah, this really? book is a labor of love, and it feels that way. It's something you will definitely treasure having in your collection. You know, Tell we, me about that horse. We do, um, uh, we do breed segments on the morning show, and I think I'm thinking about having Vaughn on to talk about Appaloosas. He's got some serious champion Appaloosas, yeah. yeah his, so his horses are, I think we're going to have him no on joke. to talk about that, because we haven't done Appaloosas yet, and... Uh, sounds to me like you could tell us a little bit about the breed. I once had a an Appy Thoroughbred. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a big guy, 17-2. I was going to say, that's a combination you don't see too often. He taught me how to sit a spook, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing Appaloosas are good at. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if it was the Thoroughbred in him or the Appy. The, the, you know, he was pretty smart. He was a little snarky. And everybody used to say that was the Appy in him, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we had an app that was uh, the same way. Uh, it, it, we used him for riding lessons and everything, but you took him out in the trail occasionally and and it w- and he threw he got everybody off including Jennifer occasionally the thing is he lulled you into this false sense of security mm. he was so quiet and everything but on the trail you're right in the middle of a trail ride usually while you're by a tree in the woods he would just do this tiny little crow hop and the he got everybody off because you weren't expecting it yeah you know yep. and it wasn't a big crow hop but you just weren't expecting it cuz you know he's so quiet and then all of a sudden you're on the ground <laughs> <So>. yep <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you know, isn't that funny? We, I would, again, look, look, see, every time, at the end of every Stable Scoop episode, I have a gazillion ideas for the next show. And it's always about the, <laughs> the BS that we talk about at the end of the, each episode is that, that we should do a show on w- w- what did it? Well, the last time you came off, what made you come off? You know, I, or what's the, you know, what surprised you the most? I, for me, it was coming off of a pony, like the worst time I ever got dumped, like mortifyingly dumped. <laughs> yes. Was like, like a 12 hand pony. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Drop that shoulder and put my rear end in the dust. <laughs> uh, all right. So anyway, right. um, we're, that's it for, for today's show. Uh, be sure to log on next Friday for another episode of Stable Scoop. Who knows what Glenn and I are going to come up with. For details about today's show, you can go to StableScoop.com, and we will put links and photographs about uh, Vaughn and his book and uh, where you can find out more information from him as well as where you can buy the book. And uh, please you can follow us on Facebook, too. Yes. Go be a Facebook fan. fan. Uh, like us on Facebook. You just search for Stable Scoop, and we pop up there. And I'll post a picture of our new doggy too. Yay, glory! Yep. Many thanks to our sponsors, Equestrian Collections and Uncle Jimmy's Brand Products. Don't forget to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network, and you can find those at horseradionetwork.com. Oh, the super cool new closings down there today. So here it is. Well, Helena, that's it for this week. Well, Glenn, <laughs> I think that's plenty, but there will be more next week. It's pretty sad that we have to script our closing. It's the only thing we script in the whole show. <laughs> and I ended up reading your lines for the rap. <laughs> I know. The whole, everything was in blue. My color's blue. Your color's purple. And I just read the whole gosh darn just thing. Read the whole thing. It's like, ah, oh, he's talked enough today. I'm going to do it. I have a bleeding child. I have to go. All right, bye. <laughs> All right. We'll see you later. Mm-hmm.